Welcome to our new track. This module consists of two complimentary videos in which you will learn all the tips and tricks related to the user interface of the Acronis Data Cloud. This video focuses on the user interface from the point of view of the service provider, whereas in the next video, we will take the viewpoint of the end customer. So let's get started. As you remember, the Acronis Data Cloud is an innovative platform targeted at managed service providers, cloud resellers, and telcos. However, the end customers of this platform are small and medium-sized businesses scattered all over the world who sign contracts with their service providers or telcos to get high-quality backup, disaster recovery, and file sync and share services. Therefore, when designing the user interface of the Acronis Data Cloud, we kept in mind both the business needs of the managed service providers and the end users. Let's have a look at the Acronis Data Cloud from the viewpoint of a managed service provider. We assume that our managed service provider has already signed up for an Acronis partnership program and activated their Acronis Data Cloud account. Let's log in to the web-based management console. On the main page, you can see a list of all the clients related to the current service provider. We use the term clients to refer to both customers and second level business partners. Customers are small and medium sized businesses who sign direct contracts with the service provider and get specific services from them. Along with customers, a large managed service provider or telco can have second level business partners with their own customers. All the clients are grouped according to the type of service. You can switch between the different service types by clicking on the corresponding drop down list in the upper left hand corner. The list of available services depends on the type of contract signed between the managed service provider and Acronis. At the moment, it includes, but is not limited to, backup and disaster recovery service, and secure file sync and share service. In the case of backup and disaster recovery service, the client's overview page presents the following information. Company name, activation status, a bridge seven-day backup history, and a number of backup entities such as servers, workstations, mobile devices, virtual machines, Office 365 mailboxes, and websites, as well as quotas assigned for each entity. Moreover, it displays the amount of cloud and local storage used by each customer. By clicking on the corresponding toggle in the upper right corner, you can get more information about the customer-owned storage and the storage inherited from the parent service provider. Moreover, you can also see the sum of usages for all the storages registered by all of the parent partners. In the case of the Secure File Sync and Share Service, the Client Overview page displays the following information. Company name, activation status, the amount of cloud storage used by each customer, and the number of users. Similarly to Backup and Disaster Recovery Service, you can get more information about the usage of each type of cloud storage allocated to the Secure File Sync and Share Service by clicking on the corresponding toggle. Let's create a new business partner. Thus, press the New button and select Partner. Specify the name and language for the new partner. Option language is a handy feature. It is especially useful for international service providers having second level business partnerships or customers located in many countries. For example, if you select Spanish as a language for one of your customers, by default the user interface will be displayed in Spanish for all of the users of that customer. Moreover, all of the notifications automatically generated and submitted to those users will also be in Spanish. Press the Next button to proceed to the next step. Enable all the relevant services for your new business partner and specify the quotas for each service or device. Finally, press the Next button and create an administrative account for the new customer. If a managed service provider has a lot of customers or second level business partners, you can group them according to some predefined criteria using entities called folders. For example, you can group customers according to geographical areas or industry or size or service usage mode. Alternatively, you can use folders to create some product lines. In this case, when provisioning to new customers, they will only have those features that are specified at the folder level. In order to create a new folder, press the New button and select Folder. 
specify the name for the new folder and language, and press the Next button. As the next step, you need to configure the services to be provided within this folder. If you create a new folder as a grouping criteria for other entities, tick all of the options. The idea behind this is that at the folder level, you enable all the services, whereas at the level of the individual customers, you disable the irrelevant services if needed. In turn, if you create a folder as a product line, tick only the services relevant for that corresponding product line and press the Next button. Finally, create an admin account for the new group. You can enable or disable any entity, be it second level business partner, customer, or folder, by selecting the corresponding option in the drop-down menu appearing next to the entity name. If you disable an entity, the provisioning of the corresponding services for that entity will be stopped until you enable it again. If you wish to completely delete an entity and remove it from the list, you need to first disable it and then delete it. It should be noted that this operation is irreversible. In particular, if you delete a folder, all the entities comprising that folder will be deleted permanently. Thus, think twice before deleting any entity. You can move a customer or business partner and make them child items in another business partner. This feature might be especially useful now in the time of turbulent global economy, when merging and acquisition of customers and small and medium-sized business partners becomes commonplace. You can also use the Move feature to assign a customer or second-level business partner to a specific folder. In order to move an entity, you need to know the internal ID of a target entity. You can find this information easily from the drop-down menu appearing next to the corresponding entity name. Along with the default internal IDs, for each entity you can also specify a custom ID. Both the internal IDs and the custom IDs are used for integration purposes. Custom IDs might be more useful for large service providers, which have hundreds of customers and thousands of users. In particular, custom IDs are shown in usage reports, which allow service providers to trace the service usage for desired customers or second-level business partners. Navigate to the section Users. Here you can see all of the admin accounts created for the current managed service provider. Similarly, you can create users also for other entities such as second-level business partners or customers. By default, a new user is always created for the selected entity. You can check which entity is currently selected by means of the breadcrumbs displayed at the top of the page. In order to create a new user account for a selected entity, press the New button and select User. Specify the user email, login, language, and role and press the Create button. In turn, in order to delete a user, select it in the list of users, and in the right pop-up panel, click Disable and then Delete. Navigate to the section Reports and then Usage. Here you can specify a type of report to be generated and submitted to the target audiences. A report can contain the information about the current usage of backup services or a summary of the service usage for a specific period. You can also specify the level of detail, that is, only direct customers and partners or all customers and partners. Along with the custom reports, you can specify also the default monthly summary report with corresponding levels of detail. Navigate to the section Operations. Here you can see a number of interactive reports or dashboards presenting various aspects of the service usage. For each report, you can perform the following operations. First, you can send the report to a specific recipient in PDF or Excel formats. Second, you can make a copy of the report and amend its contents and settings according to your business needs.
Third, you can download the report as a zip archive. Fourth, you can export the report in JSON format or generate a partial dump in CSV format. Finally, you can delete the report. Please bear in mind that this operation is irreversible. Think twice before deleting any reports. In order to create a new report, press Add Report button and select a suitable type of report. For each report, you can change the default name, customer, and reporting period. Moreover, you can specify a schedule to automatically generate and submit the report to selected recipients. Each report includes a number of customizable widgets. You can add, delete, and rearrange widgets. Moreover, for each widget, you can amend the default name and settings. Navigate to the Settings and then Storage. Here you can manage all of the cloud and local storages assigned to specific services. You can switch between the service types by clicking on the corresponding drop-down list in the upper left corner. The list of storage devices contains the following information. Backend type, inheritance from the parent business partner, and occupied space. The backend types supported by the Acronis Data Cloud include, but are not limited to, local disks, external NFS systems, and public cloud storages such as Microsoft Azure, Amazon S3, and Swift. As regards the inheritance, it should be noted that a storage provided by a parent business partner can be inherited and reused by its child business partners and customers. Please watch our separate video dedicated to setting up a storage within the Acronis Data Cloud to get more information about this process. Navigate to the section Branding. Here you can customize the user interface or appearance of your service. In particular, you can change the service name, logo, color scheme with live preview, login page URL, and other settings according to your corporate brand book and business needs. Moreover, you can use your corporate email server to conveniently receive all the service notifications. Along with partial rebranding, you can use the white labeling option to fully customize and make your service look exclusively for your end customers. Finally, you can disable rebranding. In this case, all branding settings and custom login URLs will be deleted. In order to restore the initial custom login page URL, you need to submit the corresponding information to our support team. Navigate to the section Security. Here, you can enable the logon control and specify the IP addresses from which employees can sign in to the management portal. This feature might be especially useful for military-grade organizations or private research institutions with high-level security standards. Moreover, you can allow admins from the parent business partners to manage the services of child partners. Navigate to the section Integration. Here you can see all of the available integrations of Acronis Data Cloud with the most prominent professional service automation platforms and services available in the market, such as Microsoft Azure, Autotask Professional Services Automation, ConnectWise Manage and Automate, Kaseya, and WHMCS. Please watch our separate video trainings to get more information about each of these integrations. Let's navigate back to the section Clients and have a look at the options and settings available at the customer level. Click on a customer to get a detailed information about it. In the right pop-up panel, you can see the general information about the company, services provided to this customer according to the contract, and the status of quota usage. Let's have a closer look at this customer and backup services provided to it. Thus, click on the Manage Service button in the right pop-up panel. In the section Devices, you can see all of the devices of the current customer for which the backup services are provided according to the contract. In the section Backups, you can see the current status of backup operations for all of the customer's devices. Sections Activities and Alerts display the whole history of backup operations and the information about the most recent operations accordingly. Finally, in the section Settings, you can manage all of the backup agents installed on the customer's devices. For each customer's device with a pre-installed backup agent, you can perform the following operations.
backup, standard recovery, disaster recovery, active protection, and much more. In order to get more information about these services, please visit our website and watch the corresponding video trainings available on our YouTube channel. As you can see, the Acronis Data Cloud is a very powerful platform. It is designed to address the business needs and aspirations of service providers of any size and maturity level. Along with advanced functionality, it offers extremely user-friendly, intuitive user interfaces. Once you grasp the business logic underlying the platform, you will feel comfortable to navigate through and perform any business operations within the Acronis Data Cloud. Are you excited to have some hands-on? Please don't hesitate to contact us and request a trial account for the Acronis Data Cloud. See you in the next video.